Hello, my name is Christopher Meredith and I teach creative writing at the University of Glamorgan. And this place is T. Crochet, which is the oldest building on the campus. It's not that old, to be honest with you. It was originally a big house owned by an important man. Then it became his agent's house because he was too important for it. Then it became a school of mines where people learned about engineering because this is a mining area, or it was. Now it's part of a university, and a friend of mine used to like to say that it's become the school of minds. And I want to read you quite an early poem of mine that connects the idea of, of work and industry with education. My father was a collier a long time ago, and so was his father. And uh, for us, education was supremely important. So this is a poem called Breaking Wood. And it's about that. Swatting for exams, I'd stop at noon and recreate myself in the yard with axe and splitting stick for firewood. The axe was too big and blunt from squaring pit props a hundred years ago, my father said. Still with a hollow knock and suck the blocks obediently cracked apart, and light seemed to flow from the white wood, the sappy fibres smearing a palm, hungry for the not thought, the not word. I'd run a thumbnail in a soft straight grain, or trace the crazing in the marbled bark, inspire forests that could not be dark, so filled with resin, like sunlight. In my hand, the blackened haft was hard, turned, curved like a femur, dead like a fern in coal, and the socketed stock wore plates of rust, coat after coat. This was the history I took to the living wood. Hell braced against elbow, I was glad to swing the blade. My father called this good. In his book it was right, in working men's eyes, to learn and labour and try to rise. Like the wood, I knew better, but yielded. In the exams, on wood become dead page, I wrote out thought and word and word, and the past crept in and strangled the light. Now, from my new home to my old town, I take for my parents wood in the car boot, half in apology for what I am. It has become my turn to hold the book, and my father has the cold axe for a staff. He'll put me on some peak, or sometimes scoff, but always we are far like nodding friends. Still, each time I wait till the light is gone, hoping he'll wake, acknowledge me his own. That poem, Breaking Wood, um, came about, as far as I can remember, because it's quite an old poem now, I wrote it a long time ago, from a number of things. It came about from a play, an activity, an object, and really, all the experience of my childhood, those things coming together, but first of all with an object, and that was an axe that we kept in the coal cot in the house where I was brought up. It was a collier's axe used for squaring pit props, and uh, objects sometimes have a power to communicate, and really that's where the poem started, with the physical object and the physical sensation of cutting firewood, and I think what drew me into writing uh, Breaking Wood was the contrast between that and the intellectual activity of swatting for exams, uh, headwork, as, uh, as my father might have called it. It came from a bit of history as well, because in the history exams I was preparing for, and was very bad at, I learnt that uh, Gladstone, of all people, used to go and chop down trees for relaxation. He'd spend the morning trying to solve the Irish question, and the afternoons chopping down trees. We'll draw a veil over what he did in the evenings. So I thought I'd try that. So I went and chopped firewood while I was swapping, swatting for exams. And the shape of the haft 
of the axe, it struck me, was curved in the same way that a thigh bone is. And that's an image that comes out in the poem. And the sensuality of the object and the history that was invested in it in squaring pit props and how it led to me at that moment um, trying to go on to something new in my life was, uh, was what informed the poem. I said there was a play that informed the poem as well. I'm going to tell you a secret now because I don't think I've told anybody this before. But at the end of the poem, there's a line, hoping he wake, acknowledge me his own. And it's an echo of a line in Shakespeare's play, The Tempest, uh, about Prospero, the magician, and Caliban, the monster. The symbols of Prospero's power are his staff and his book of magic spells. Well, in my poem, the staff becomes the axe and the book is the learning that's going on. Right at the end of the Tempest, um, the monster Caliban is acknowledged by Prospero. Uh, he puts his hand on Caliban's shoulder and says, this thing of darkness, I acknowledge my own. So the imagery of light and darkness in the poem, of master and servant as well is in there, of learned person and perhaps rather wayward figure is all contained in that image. It deals with complex stuff, so I don't want to summarise it up too much, but that'll give you some ways into seeing how that poem works and the ways in which poems arise. But it started with a simple object in your hand.